Hello and welcome to the 15th anniversary of Pwn to Own. My name is Erin Sindelar. I have had the amazing pleasure of being at Pwn to Own since the 10th anniversary. That was my first time attending and it's been fun every time since. Mike, Brian, and Dustin are joining me today and we're gonna reminisce on the amazing history of these 15 years and all of our experiences through them. Let's start with some introductions. Um, Mike, do you wanna go first? Sure, so Mike Gibson, Vice President of Threat Research and Customer Success for Trend Micro. And uh, I had the privilege of getting involved with ZDI and the Pondone program about five years ago. Brian, how about you? Yeah, so I'm the Senior Director of Vulnerability Research here at Trend Micro. Uh, I've been in, responsible for the Zero Day Initiative and the Pwn to Own Contest since about 2012. So it, actually this 15 year anniversary is also possibly my 10th year anniversary for uh, running the contest. And um, so I've been involved obviously with it for, for some time. I've seen a lot of the changes happen um, and it's been very entertaining for me. Dustin? Hi, I'm Dustin Childs. I am the Senior Communications Manager and unofficial historian of the Zero Day Initiative. And I actually go back further than anyone else uh, when it comes to Pwn to Own participation because I used to work for Microsoft and was on the receiving end of uh, Pwn to Own bugs and can remember back in the day when, uh, yeah, it was just a browser-based competition uh, and it has definitely changed a lot, but I've been doing this uh, probably longer than both of y'all combined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely don't remember. Um, oh, I wasn't at the first Pwn to Own contest, but I remember I was so... It was in Vancouver, right? And it, right. At, at, at Cansec West. And I remember I was a, a security engineer in for a, a security startup in Ottawa, in Canada. And I remember reading about the contest and what took place there because that was kind of the area we were focusing on from a security product perspective. And I, I remember thinking, hey, I really, you know, I'd love to participate in a contest like that someday. I did a little bit of exploit research, I did some training. I never got anywhere close to being able to have enough skill to participate in the contest, but uh, it was certainly an aspiration for me, for sure. Yeah, to see where it's come from where it started is really pretty amazing, because to, to understand the genesis of Pwnown, you have to go back to 2007 and what the perception of security was like then. And that was largely, dri largely driven by an Apple ad campaign because if you remember, there was Justin Long who was standing there saying, I'm a Mac. And then you had kind of the nerdy looking guy saying, and I'm a PC. And the, the campaign was like, oh, well, you know, Macs never get viruses, Macs never get hacked, Macs never get whatever. Uh, and at Cansec West, uh, we wanted to kind of poke a little holes in this uh, because the security community knew otherwise. So Dragos, who was the conference organizer, uh, took his uh, a MacBook and said, I'm going to put this MacBook on the network, on the conference network. And if you pwn it, meaning if you hack it, you can own it. And ZDI, do you want to buy the bug? And then we said, yeah, we'll pay $10,000 for the bug. And that was the very first pwn own, and that was it. Uh, and then overnight, uh, Dino Daisovi came up with, I think it was a QuickTime exploit that he used to pwn the machine. And that was the first winner of pwn to own And from that, it's grown out through... Now, way beyond web browsers, we still do privilege escalations, but you know we do virtualization software, we do consumer devices. We just got finished with an ICS SCADA uh, contest and we have cars and we have an automotive category, all from that one simple little exchange based on an ad campaign from the mid 2000s. So that that's how much Pondone has grown. It's amazing. And I know, you know, Brian, I'm sure, uh, I, I, you know, I talk to Brian a lot uh, you know, as we prepare for the contests. And I know that a lot of that gray hair that you have <laughs> is a, a phone to own. So, uh, yeah, I look uh, back. I look back at the photos from 2012, which was my very first phone to own, which actually was the first mobile phone to own. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I had completely brown hair. So I think, you know, majority of this gray hair <laughs> and this, these good looks come from uh, all the phone to own stress over yeah, the years. Because yeah. so we, we've gone from one contest a year to three contests a year and all the logistical yeah. planning that goes behind it. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that's one area that people don't understand is that we start planning Pwn to Owns about six to eight months before they actually happen. So Brian, let's kind of shed some light on how we determine what targets are going to be in what Pwn to Own. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of funny story there is what ends up happening is we sit there and uh, usually after the last Pwn to Own, 
is we'll be hanging out at the hotel bar uh, <laughs> drinking and we'll be talking about, hey, we, you know, it'd be really cool if we would add this target to the contest, right? And so what we'll do is we'll think about, you know, the kind of focus we want for the specific event and we'll talk about, you know, you know, what really cool hacks we'd want to see. Um, and then we will figure out a price for those. Uh, and it's as simple as that. We'll sit there and we'll figure out, you know, if we want, you know, this phone and that phone and this IoT device um, would be cool to see. And, you know, we want to see research in this area. So we're going to price this target a little bit higher. Um, and that's really driven participation over the years. I mean, if we look back at some of the contests when, uh, you know, uh, the large Chinese teams were participating, you know, we would put in, you know, really cosmic exploits where it's like, all right, first you have to compromise the browser, then you have to compromise the, the guest operating system, and then you have to compromise the virtual machine, and then you've got to compromise the host op operating system. Uh, and we'd give, you know, $200,000 for that. And, you know, those teams would come together and they would, you know, have specialists in each area and build an exploit chain that would actually do that. Uh, and yeah. so the contest over the years, you know, just from conversations uh, at, you know, you know, at conferences like CanSec West, uh, you know, with, with researchers around the world has really kind of, uh, you know, driven some really innovative research that, you know, gets recognized every year at conferences like Black Hat and the Pony Awards and things like that. It's been a... Uh, the you know the innovation in exploitation technology that's come out of Pwn to Own and the protections that we've been able to build out of that have been you know really uh, pushing the industry forward. Yeah, I, I know that uh, Brian and I get no, well, we get lots of inquiries throughout the year about people coming to us with ideas about I want to do a Pwn to Own at this conference for this top for these targets for, and uh, we we have to deflect most of them, but it, it really is one of the reasons why it's expanded from one contest to three, which is not just internal ideas and internal focus, but also some external influence and inter external ideas for potential uh, new opportunities for us to expand. Yeah, I know. How many years did we talk about having a SCADA uh, pwned own before we actually ended up in pwned own Miami at least? Oh yeah, years. yeah, yeah. I mean, three or four years we've been talking about it. Like you know, what it'd be really cool to put some of those targets under test to just see what happens. And you know, if we look at you know even just how that contest has has been adopted by the community. Well, the first time we did it back in 2020, right before the pandemic happened. You know, we 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 launched the contest and we put the prize amounts on it. And we weren't exactly sure how it was going to be received, right? So right. You know, we had you know put human machine interface software in there, control server software, and we just kind of. You know, said, well, let's see how it goes. Uh, and I remember, you know, we kept getting registrations and we kept trying to figure out how we were going to put this all together and make it work. Uh, and that contest really has kind of blown up, you know, even even after taking two years off because of COVID, um, you know, we we brought that contest back on site at S4 this year uh, and had, a you know, 32 entries in that contest, gave away over four hundred thousand um, dollars and some really, you know, kind of uh, innovative exploit techniques that, you know, we can't talk about currently, but will, which will be released publicly after the patches are out that I think will actually, you know, help people understand, you know, how how to approach a target like that, how to defend against the exploitation of certain targets in the ICS space. Um, and, you know, also to understand, you know, which people are really competitive in that space and the types of companies and, and researchers that like to look in that space and to kind of give them some visibility uh, to the to the greater, greater community. Speaking of participation in that first condo in Miami, I, I seem to remember some sort of wager on the yeah. number of contestants. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things that we do um, as we're prepping for the contest is we're trying to figure out, you know, how many people are going to register, right? And so, and we can usually tell uh, by the types of questions that we get from researchers and how many we're getting, right? And so well, what ended up happening, Abdul and Jaisal at the time, we were both part of ZDI, we were debating how many, you know, how many entries are we going to get? And there was a wager placed that I think Abdul wanted to see over 20, you know, Jaisal said that he didn't think there would be over 25 and Abdul thought there would be over 25 and they placed the bet of having to eat a uh, dehydrated scorpion if it went over a certain yes. number. And it went over that number on the day of registration close. And so at the contest, after everything was over, uh, we were sitting again in the hotel bar trying to trying to figure out, you know, uh, trying to figure out first where we get the scorpion. Of course, Amazon has the yeah, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and so we shipped them out and uh, 
they had to eat a scorpion because we were over the number of registrations that were that were necessary for the bet. So that, that's the most stressful day for me is the day that registrations close. <laughs> Brian, and get, Brian and I get on the call and we go start going through the budget side of things. What's this contest going to cost? And uh, and you know um, we all, all all of us here are fortunate enough to work for Trend Micro, who believes heavily in this contest and what we do for the community, the researchers, the industry. And so uh, we do have a little bit of flexibility, but it's always like, what, what? We're like ten, you know, ten. We're going to be ten times uh, the number of entries that I was hoping. You know, but we, we definitely want to um, uh, get as many as possible. But it does it does make for some interesting conversations while we while we start to figure out the finances of the contest. But uh, again, you know, we're lucky to be part of an organization that believes in this effort. Yeah, and I think you can really look at like you know Trend Micro. When when they when they acquired the tipping point you know device and, and the zero day initiative program um, several years ago you know the contest has really blossomed since then right so you know we've been able to purchase you know, the all, you know pretty much all the entries that came in that were fully yeah, zero yeah. day um, we've been able to grow the contest in the ICS space this is the time when we've been you know added the Tesla to the contest you know with support from from Tesla the you know uh, building out three events a year and and doing all of the streaming and all of the stuff that we've been able to do it really is been the investments from Trend Micro that have really you know driven this contest to the position that it is today kind of the industry's leading you know hacking contest and where we get to see a lot of really cool innovative innovative research come out so it's been really exciting to be part of it over the last uh, 10 years for myself but 15 years for the entire contest yeah and our first million dollar show was with Trend Micro as well so I think that's important to point out Oh, I remember. I remember. I'm sure you do. Yes. And our second. <laughs> and our second. You two, and me, yeah. Once you get two commas in the prize category, that's when you know you get a good show. Yeah. What would you say is the most monumental advancement in the history of the 15 years? Well, I think for me, I, I always look at the way that the vendors respond, right, um, to, to the entries that are coming in. Um, and so, you know, I, I think, you know, you know, because Pondone is a true zero day contest, right, where you have to have a zero day in the software to get paid, um, you know, the vendors are aware of when the contest actually is. And what ends up happening is as the deadlines approach and the contest approach, if the, the vendors are forced to implement new security features to ensure that they are putting up the best defenses at the contest right and so you'll see what ends up happening is you know right before um the contest all the vendors will start updating all their software right so you know tesla will push a new release or there'll be the largest you know one of the larger patch tuesdays happen right before the contest mm -hmm things like that, um, you know, new mitigations get rolled out right before the contest. And so the one thing for me, like when it comes to looking at Pondo and is like, not only is it, you know, pushing, you know, kind of the exploit research, you know, forward, but it's also f having the vendors, you know, in lockstep pushing mitigations forward and actually using the data from from Ponda own to justify new security investments in the software and new security response, you know, investments in their company, um, and and giving, you know, and producing patches that you know protect our customers and protect their customers. All of this stuff is, you know, uh, it all happens kind of behind the scenes. I mean, the, the you know the, the showy stuff is the exploits. But the vendors are there, you know, also, you know, producing fixes and, and on site in the disclosure room, trying to understand how it works, going through the exploitation techniques, talking about how long it took, took for them to find the bug, um, you know, what techniques they were using, uh, what mitigations they could implement. And then you see those rolled out in the next year. Like I've been in this long enough where I've seen uh, new sandboxes developed and rolled out and different, you know, app, you know, vulnerability specific mitigation techniques have an impact at the contest. So, you know, a lot of that stuff that's happening underneath the covers that most people don't see um, are all driven by the Pwn to Own hacking contest. And um, it allows, you know, it just makes it easy, you know, makes it uh, makes it harder to attack. It raises the cost of exploitation, uh, which is ultimately the goal for the contest. That, that was one of the eye-opening moments for me. I was excited when Brian uh, invited me into the disclosure room for the first time, the first time I attended the, the contest. And, uh, and, and I think it was, it, was a pretty, it was a pretty sophisticated exploit. And I was amazed at how impressed and excited the vendor was about the technique that was used and the bug chain that was used in order to exploit the system. And I, I assumed it would have been a little bit more combative, but it actually truly is a partnership between us, the researcher and the vendor. And, and when you get inside that, you know, those closed doors, 
there's a lot of respect, mutual respect amongst the groups, and it was really, uh, really interesting to see them embrace and want to learn more, right, real time, you know, at the table, they want to learn more about the approach that the researcher uses to find the bugs, and not just about the details about the bug itself, but how they even get there, how they find it, and you know how long have they been sitting on maybe a privileged escalation bug just to you know to be able to tap into uh, to complete the chain and stuff like that. So very very interesting dynamic. Yeah, that's one of the biggest takeaways for me, having participated on both sides of it. If you go back into the mid two thousand, bug bounty programs were pretty controversial at the time, but since then they've been very normalized, and I think ZDI and Pondone have really been instrumental in that. Uh, showing that independent researchers and vendors can have similar goals and can actually work together. And it is cooperative in nature. It doesn't have to be adversarial. Uh, and Pondone also gives these researchers an opportunity to display how creative and how intelligent and how uh, just awesome their research is. Uh, but still, at the same time, get the bugs fixed before the bad guys use them. They're not reselling to exploit brokers. They're not going straight to the uh, you know, a, a, an underground marketplace or whatever, where we're financially compensating them in a way, uh, but also giving them the recognition that, that, that they are some of the best of the best. And uh, yeah, that recognition has uh, opened up a lot of job opportunities for uh, past pwn to own participants as well. Yes. Very true. Including opportunities. Including, yeah, I was going to say, we've been hired. Yeah, we got a few on, yeah. on staff ourselves. But yep. yeah, yeah I, I love hearing, you know, some of the participants. I love sitting in the room and just hearing them, uh, the researchers interact with each other while they're waiting for their attempts to go and uh, and talking about how it's always been a dream of theirs to participate and, you know, um, and, and just how, how much they value and enjoy the competition in the contest. Where do you see it moving next? Predictions for the future? <laughs> No, I never, th I never thought that there would be a time where I, we would have a car in the contest, right? And so, um, you know, that was airplane, you know, no, yeah, airplane, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, ship. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think you know we'll see. Obviously, we're looking to expand the contest and trying to figure out how we can, you know, push the industry forward in the various areas. I know one of the conversations we actually recently had just after the Miami event was with one of the one of the vendors on, you know, where can we place bounties uh, and prize packages in, you know, even more complicated parts of the protocols, right? And to, mm -hmm. so I think we'll, there'll be a lot more partnerships with uh, with the vendors trying to identify key areas of code where we can put prize prize packages on you know we are looking at you know possibly uh, investigating things like cloud and how we do stuff in in, in that space um, uh, but you know I, I look at Pondo and it, anything's possible right uh, you know if we we sit there and we think you know hey this is an important attack surface for us to secure uh, or at least understand how an exploit would work in this area you know uh, so that we can build the right protections for it you know, that's where we're going to put our put our bets. And so, you know, I think those are those are conversations, you know, Mike may have some insight there where we want to push it. But it, I think there's a, you know, anything's possible at this contest. Yeah, at this yeah. Point. yeah, I think you touched on it from my perspective. And anyway. like, well, one, it would be great to get more uh, automotive or, you know, companies participating and not just that. So maybe we could even have a full blown automotive category with I want it to look like a used car lot. out. Yeah, there. exactly. Like one yeah. Of everything. And, then, and then, you know, the cars that don't get one, the three of us can drive off into the sunset. Exactly. And we'll, yeah, we'll keep them. Um, so that that would be great if we could get more more EV uh, involvement. And also, um, Brian touched on SaaS, right? You know, we, we trip typically do on premise software as part of the contest. And there's some dynamics or complexity to doing this level of contest with, with, you know, cloud services, but, um, that's where the, that's where the majority of applications are going. We're all leveraging, you know, even trend micro as a company, we, we offer more and more of our solutions as a SaaS offering. So how do we, how do we get the researchers, you know, access they need to be able to test those and find some, uh, some interesting bugs and, and exploitation in the SaaS world could be totally, and it's going to look totally different yeah. what they have access to what happens at you know post exploitation so uh, getting more insights there would definitely be valuable to us as an organization to help our customers for sure i know part of the feedback that i hear from a lot of the folks who who watch pwn to own but don't participate it, in it uh is, is they want to see it expand into other areas too and we haven't quite figured out how to do uh I, the, the biggest request is when are you all going to do a, a pwn to own healthcare because uh, mm -hmm. we know healthcare systems are a big thing uh, it's like uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that that sounds hard. 
Uh, the other one is uh, pwn to own election security. When are y'all going to do that? And that's like, can you guys just like back off for just a minute? Let us get the car figured out. Could first? you imagine a bunch of researchers showing up at hospitals because that's the only way they could access some uh, some healthcare I, devices? <laughs> I I would believe it, I, especially in, in certain parts of the world. I would believe it, uh, considering what some of the researchers go through to get their exploits working and tested. Uh, but yeah, so that's the areas that I. You know, in addition to the cloud, like you said, we, we, we have to do more in the cloud as far as finding out what those exploitation techniques are, uh, because we know it's a big target out there. and We know the bad guys are going to go after that. So let's get the good guys on it first. Well, I can't wait to see what happens and who will end up being Master of Poem this week to add to the long list, the 15 years of list of uh, winners that we've had. Thank you all for your time and your insights. It will be another great year, not just with this Pwn to Own, but the remaining Pwn to Own of the year. And we look forward to seeing you all there.